Is it actually possible that this tiny little pill could be making me feel so crummy? Stay tuned and we'll talk about just that. Well, hey, folks, I do appreciate you being with me today on the Transplant Helper podcast slash YouTube video series. My name is Jim Merle. And yes, today we're talking about Prograph or Taculemus. And it's based upon basically a Facebook post I saw just a few hours ago that I really wanted to expand on just a little bit and talk about because there's one person on a Facebook group, a heart transplant group that I'm a member of, who's complaining of having some rather terrible side effects based upon taking the medicine in one sense, but mainly based upon her doses being raised from what it was maybe even a few days ago. So let me just read her post as best I can, and then we'll go off of that. Here's what she says. Anyone feel like Tacro, that's Tacrolimus, could be making them feel lousy. And then she has a few dots and dashes. Fatigued, upset stomach, headaches, overall drained feeling. When I was just on two milligrams twice a day, she said, I was feeling fairly good. Once they increased the dose to three milligrams a day, I started feeling lousy again. At my lower dose of Tacro, my Tacro level was marked at 2.2. Once I began the higher dose, I started feeling crummy again nine months out. So she's nine months out post-heart transplant. She's telling us that she once took two milligrams twice a day, felt okay. Now that she's up to three milligrams twice a day, she feels lousy, crummy. Both of those words, I think, are used in here. And so let's address a few things here. Number one, you being just nine months out of transplant, if they found the level that you say here, that 2.2 of attack level was only 2.2, that's why they moved you from two milligrams to three milligrams. Most of the time, and every transplant center is different, they have different protocol, they have different different standards in which they follow but most of the time most transplant centers would like someone who's under a year out to maintain their tachylemus level and they change it pretty quickly by the way but to maintain that tachylemus level at between 10 and 12 and i can remember always nailing mine home right at 11 all except for one time it seemed to be a little bit high we made an adjustment had to go right back where we were but mine's been nailed pretty much all the while at 10 to 12 but primarily right there at that 11 mark so if yours is just 2.2 i'm glad they caught that and i'm glad they're trying to increase that but yes that increase which is basically increasing you one third of the more medicine actually twice a day is going to make you feel like this just as you listed fatigue with upset stomachs and headaches and overall feeling of drained especially a lot of times one of the drugs that you take along with that most times that gets all the credit is going to be called prednisone. I've already done two different videos on prednisone. I'll link here and link down there in the show notes, and one of which I called the devil's drug. No doubt prednisone makes us feel terrible. Most of us feel terrible. But I think in one sense, prednisone may just kind of get a little bit of a bad rap. That is that there are probably other drugs that contribute to all the symptoms that you put on or push on <laughs> to prednisone is such as this one prograft slash tacrolimus brings on very similar symptoms feeling overall drains feeling having headaches feeling and then she doesn't list it here but dizziness and weakness and all that can come about from either prednisone or prograft but in this case i think you might be dealing with prograft now once your level gets too high right now it's too low at 2.2 i would say but once it gets too high you're going to be back to dealing with with tremors you know, just shaky hands, just shake and shake and shake. And sometimes as I used to describe as people, it's like my inner shook. It wasn't always what could be seen, like looking at my hands or arms or ever. It was what I could really feel on the inside. It's like if you had poured, very slowly poured a glass of Coke or, or Sprite or something like that, some carbonated water into my body it would just sizz up and blow out <laughs> because there was so much I felt like going on on the inside needing to get out and prograph does that as well as tacrolimus doing that but now let's think about some things or at least look at some things what i've done here and i've just got my 
device here in front of me to kind of look over at a few websites, the makers of ProGraph, the ones who actually put it out, and Tacrolimus 2, to see what they say the side effects are and to see if there's going to be any similarities. Well, if you look at it from one perspective, they actually claim, and I'll read through most of these, they actually claim that one who's on ProGraph, yes, will experience a change in how much or how often or painful they urinate, will find themselves confused, weakness, uneven heartbeat, trouble breathing, numbness in the hands and lips, dizziness, lightheadedness, all-out fatigue, running fast, slow, or pounding heartbeats, fevers, chills, stuffy noses, sore throat, body aches, headaches, tremors, seizures even, rapid weight gain in your hands and ankles. Again, prednisone would probably have gotten the blame for that, but this could be doing it. Skin changes or growths, swollen glands in your armpits, your groin, or I would even add to that right in here underneath the neck. I noticed that on myself. Uh, unusual bleeding or bruising, weakness, weakness on the one side or the other, confusion, clumsiness, trouble, and clear thinking. I'm all over that one. And then down here at the latter part of it, you could also notice diarrhea, constipation, nausea, vomiting, joint pain, or back pain. Now, I won't take time to go back through all of these, but this kind of compares to the list that you had, and we'll relook at both of your lists. For me personally and for many, many, many of the patients that I deal with face-to-face, -face, I would say the vast majority of us – experience many of these maybe not all but many of these symptoms that they even own up to to produce all that subsides as as medications come down as dosages come down things get better but let me add a little bit to this i'm gonna go back that we read the list that was their official list of what they claim happens if you're on prograph and by the way i always say what they claim is probably going to be less than what you experience when you go back over to what was being said in the original post by miss smith she said that she was fatigued yes that's on the list that she had an upset stomach yes headaches yes she felt drained yes so basically all of your symptoms and i'm scrolling down through the rest of this uh little text here people you know were commenting back fairly quickly basically all of them are saying one of two things they're either saying absolutely that's me that's how i experience it it's bad or a few are saying hey i've got that going on too i just didn't realize who to blame or what to blame so now that i know this just this little bitty tan and white creep i know who to blame but guess what you can't get rid of this guy this medication right here i've got mine happens to be the generic so it's Taculemus, that's the little bottle name on there, Taculemus, also known as Prograph, is the most important medication you take hands down. Now, there will be others. You may take a form of Myfortic or Microphenolate that will run right inside of this one. You may take other things along with that, such as a Valcite, which is a very expensive antiviral medicine that you could take from time to time be important but as far as stopping rejection stopping rejection you need this guy right here you need the blue guys which is malfortic or mycophenolate and you need another little white pill if i can dig it quick enough another little white pill in this bottle which is your steroid now, i'm off steroid right now but i'm not crazy enough to throw them away if i get into trouble i've got steroids to take to help me to get past any mild rejection so you kind of have to take care of yourself but nonetheless yes to answer the question could ha could anyone have or is anyone having um feeling lousy with fatigue and upset stomach and headache and drain feeling and and they seem to have, have associated that with an increase in tack yes uh, again your increase in tack i think was needed because i think a 2.2 level is way too low they need to get you up at nine months. You need to be between nine and 12. They'll bring you on down a little farther as you get maybe like a year, year and a half out or two years. But right now, you need to be on up there in the middle. So very low. I hope they get your tag level up. Unfortunately, some of the symptoms are going to come along a little bit worse while you're getting up. Now, let me add one more thing to this. This is some extra research I did that we do need to keep in mind when we're taking Tacro. You know, if Tacro would prevent me from rejecting my heart if I, if all i knew was hey if i take one tacro it'll prevent 
me from injecting my heart or take two tacros it'll work that much better why wouldn't we want to just shove a handful of tacro in every day when we get in a dangerous situation and make sure our hearts don't go into rejection and our and we're fine by the way this medication is used for almost all organ donations so heart lung liver kidney pancreas eyes everybody takes tacro at some point to some level but if that's all that it would do, you know, give me the upset stomach, make me lightheaded, make me confused, make me all the things I just listed a couple of times, could I bear with it? Yes, but let me give you some other stuff. Here's what it says also happens. This medication causes the following problems. Listen to this. A higher risk of infection. Ain't that what you're trying to beat? A higher risk of cancer and skin cancer and lymphoma. And I don't know if I've ever said this on a show, but I want to say it today that about 80% of transplant patients who die within the first three years, now mark it down, the first one, two, three years, 80% transplant patients who die in the first three years do not die because their organ failed. They die because they got cancer. And, and typically some skin cancers, some treatable cancers, but they ultimately would die because they got skin cancer. Now, what do you do then? You say, I'd rather throw this ProGraph stuff, throw it out. I don't want it. No, you have to have it. It's life-saving, but there's a balance right there. So cancers can be a part of that. Um, problems with your uh, blood pressure are definitely a part of that. Changes in heart rhythms are a part of that. Changes in your diabetic state. You know, a lot of us, when we come out of transplant immediately, we're, we're almost completely diabetic. They're giving us so much ProGraph pumping into us, that steroid, that it's basically just throwing everything out of whack, and we become temporarily, if not for a long time, diabetic. Our sugars go through the roof, and we have to have that treated, maybe with some insulin. Maybe if you're bad enough, you get shots in your stomach. That's a lot of fun. Try that out. But nonetheless, these are all symptoms. Uh, nervous system disorders, which I think would go along with anxiety and confusion and that sort of thing. But nervous system disorders overall that can stick kidney problems this is why every time you go to the doctor and they go to check your prograph level they're not checking prograph level so much to say okay do we have him or her at a 10 so their organs protected they're saying do we have him or her at a 10 so that their organs are protected so they're not at say a 14 when their kidneys are being put out because there's a fine line there between being able to help maintain the organ they're trying to maintain, but going a little bit too high and damaging other organs, particularly the kidneys. And so they got on here kidney problems. Anemia, low red blood cell counts. And that's why right here in my bag, I don't know if I can. You don't want me digging in here too long, do you? Somewhere right here in my bag. Uh, there they are. I won't waste too much time on you, but look right here. You just got to see the back of my head for a while. Right here in my bag, I keep a good old-fashioned dose. If I can do it this way, maybe. A good old-fashioned dose of iron pills. Good old iron pills. And guess what a good old iron pill do to you? A good old iron pill. A good old iron pill tied in with some good old magnesium and some good old tacrolimus, uh, he'll probably help you drop about 30 pounds. <laughs> I mean, really, not that you want it, but you'll feel like you've got a virus for a while. Let's just say it lightly that way. So anyway, it can also cause uh, high potassium to be in your blood, which potassium has to get very, high, very, very high to be a problem. But if it gets too high or too low, um, that has a lot to do with kind of, I call it the go-go juice to keep your organs moving, especially the, the heart and stuff. You really need it to be there. If it gets too low, then the, those muscles is all they are. They'll start kind of cramping. And uh, so you have a problem like a football player on a field might eat a whole pickle or he might uh, eat a bunch of bananas and, and such. Uh, high and rich potassium foods to try to recover from cramps. And then finally, gastrointestinal uh, problems, including holes in your stomach or your bowel are there. And this is the drug. Now, you've got several others, but this is the drug that always suggests wearing sunscreen. Wearing sunscreen. you got to wear your sunscreen. Don't wear, you know, this little 
cheapy peepy stuff that that you don't want to be seen in and you hide out and i wish i had mine in here i don't have it in here today i usually do but uh, believe it or not men they sell a sunscreen for men they do it uh just stay away from the pink and the brown bottles but keep turning down the aisles there in walmart wherever it is you shop and you'll find some blue bottles it's basically a an aftershave but it's basically a a uh a lotiony type aftershave that you put on, but it's got, I think, uh, I think you can get a couple different models, but it's got the uh, either the the 15 or the 30 in it to protect your face. So very good for your face. Of course, good for your arms, hands, whatever. I won't show you my foot right now. I've got a country foot right now because I uh, cut grass with a shoe that only covered half my foot. So I've got a white half and a brown half. Not a good idea, but it was done. But anyway, that's not what we're asking here today main question can prograph or tacrolimus cause these problems uh fever upset stomach headache overall yes as a matter of fact they can cause many more and it's kind of been a common knowledge of mine i think of you too that whatever a drug company says um can be caused the side effects of their drugs you can bank on those you may not get all of them, don't get me wrong, but once you start getting some of those, you can bank on those, and you can bank on writing another book on what they really cause to happen in your life. So that's basically it. I'm so sorry that uh, this person's been dealing with this, uh, but I'll tell you this, you're not alone in it. There's a lot of us that are dealing with this same issue. Let me ask you to do a few things for me right quick before we go. Number one, how about give this show a thumbs up? Just find that thumbs up button right beneath us here. Give this show a thumbs up. Uh, it doesn't mean that this show touched you and it's better than all others, but if if you've watched it and, and you continue to watch my program, give me a big old thumbs up. That'll make me feel better. In addition to that, if you've not already subscribed to this program, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified uh, when all this new content comes out. And I usually tape on Tuesdays as well as a couple of other days a week. Uh, I think programs that help us all and all of them are kind of set up around advocating, educating and motivating you as a transplant patient or those who might be awaiting transplant. So subscribe. And then if you look right there to the right on the subscription bar, there's a little bell looking thing like a ring-a-ling-a-ling bell. Hit that bell. That bell notification will actually uh, send you a notification to your phone, like your iPhone, your Android phone. And just, just tell it. it won't bother you really. It'll just say, hey, Jim is live. Or Jim just released a new video. You don't have to tap on it. You don't have to do anything. It just puts it there on the front screen of your phone for about two seconds and said, Jim is live. Jim is this. Jim is that. And I do plan to do some live sessions coming up really soon. And I would love to have as many as I can in those live sessions because I want feedback. We're going to have an open discussion about the LVAD. That's one of my plans for a live session. Open discussion about LVADs, of course, RVADs and BIVADs. But nonetheless... I want you to be a part of that. So go ahead and subscribe and then hit the bell notification just so you'll know when I put that new content out. And as I always say, until next time, stay stronger, friends.